Hello and welcome back. I'm Joseph Hoffman and in this lesson we'll be wrapping up arabesque by learning the end of the B section and coda. Let's get started by checking out the score. Let's review the path of this piece. We start here, right? And the repeat signs that point forward we just ignore. And then we get here to the first ending, teleport back to the repeat sign that points forward. And then the second time we have to skip the first ending, teleport to the second ending, then we continue. Here's another forward repeat sign which we just ignore. And we go on. Now, here's where we learned up to last time. And then you'll notice starting here, the notes are the same as measures three, four, five, but eventually we get something new. And that is starting right here. Okay, we have some new chords and a slightly different theme. This is very similar to measures seven, eight, nine, ten, but slightly different now, which we'll look at in a second. But here's another first ending. So we can go in here because it's the first time we've made it here. Repeat sign, teleports us back to this station. Now we're going to do this again. So we're playing the B section again. We get back to this main theme and then this slightly new section and then we can't do the first ending again. We teleport to the second ending and now here's the coda. Very similar to measures three, four, and five, but slightly different, which we'll look at in a second. We go up really high and then da 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 dum and then play this final chord. So this is our coda. So we have this little section to learn, this ending of the B section, and then the coda, which is our second ending. Let's come to the piano to learn it. Let's start here in measure 19, which is where we finished learning last time. And then we saw how this comes back to the A section. One and two and one and two and. Or the A theme, I guess I should say, because we're really still in the B section, because now here it's a little different in measure 24. Notice we have a new chord. Back in measure 7, we go to the C inversion chord, but this time, what three notes do you see? We have an A, a D and an E. See those three notes, how that D and E are right a step apart from each other, and that A on the bottom. Then that goes to an A minor chord, A, D, E to A minor. Okay, will you try that with me? Try this chord, A, D, E, two times, then A minor two times, then A, D, E two times, Now, let's look at what the right hand does. Finger two in measure 24 starts on what note? Can you name it? If you said B, you're correct. So finger two is right here on B. Now, pause the video and I'd like you to see if you can figure out measures 24 to 27 on your own. Watch the rhythm, watch the notes, and see if you can figure this part out on your own. Then press play and we'll try it together. Here's what it should sound like. In measure 24, it goes one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and. Now notice the staccatos and the slurs and the accent. There's a lot to pay attention to here. You've got one and two and one and two accent one and two and one and two and. Pause the video one more time and pay very close attention to the staccatos, the legato marks, the accent, all the notes and rhythms. Work on right hand alone measures 24 to 27 on your own then press play to go on. Now together that will sound like this. One and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and. And then at that point we go back to measure 12. Okay now 
Here you have a choice. If you'd like to try measures 24 to 27 hands together, go ahead and pause the video and try that. Or if you'd like to work on it a little while longer hands alone, you can do that too. So make that choice. If you'd like to pause, go ahead. Otherwise, let's keep going and look at the coda. Remember, we just took this first ending back to measure 12. Then we're going to play this whole section again, playing a little slower than normal. Then we get back to this main theme. Then the new part we just learned. Here I go to the second ending. Now I'm going to stop right there so you can tell me what you noticed was different about this section starting in measure 28. You probably noticed it started off the same as our main theme but then here it's different so we're going back and forth. Look at the left hand. We have this one chord going to the four chord, back to the one chord, back to the four chord. Interesting, huh? And the right hand does done. Instead of doing this like we're used to, it skips to this pattern. To this pattern, up an octave. And then notice, look at this note right here. On the staff, you can see that that's, those ledger lines go A, C, and then you know that that's a D, just a step above that high C ledger line. So that's a D way up here. And then what? Our, both of our hands have to come down low. Notice how the right hand finger five goes to this E, right? Just a skip above middle C. The left hand comes down here to this E. And both hands are stepping down together. Ticky, ticky, T, rest. Ticky, ticky, T, rest. Then what? Both of our hands have to move back up. Left hand plays an A and an E. Now see if you can name the two notes that the right hand plays. Can you look at that interval and name those two notes? If you said C and A, you're correct. It's a sixth. And that top note's an A, just to skip above our flag F line. And that's treble C. Now what chord is that? If we took this C and jumped it down here, we'd see that's just an A minor chord played in a fancy way. We just took the C out from the middle and put it up here and then added an extra A on top. But if you mix those all together, it's just an A minor chord played in a fancy way. Right? So here's the last two measures. Whoops. So listen to measure 28 to the end. We get this. Now pause the video and practice measures 28 to the end. First try right hand alone, then try left hand alone, and then go ahead and try it hands together. And then press play to go on. Now, we've taken a look at all the sections of arabesque, so you're ready to practice on your own each section. I recommend that at first you're not trying, don't try and play the whole piece start to finish. Take each section and play it many, many times until it's mastered. And then you'll put all those sections together. Once you can play it start to finish, you're ready to start practicing it with metronome. A good metronome speed to start at may be 120 with the metronome clicking the eighth note. So what that means is your left hand's playing quarter notes, so it will be one and two and one and two and. See how my metronome is clicking the eighth notes? One and two and one and two and one and two and. Once you can play it, no missed notes and no pauses at 120, you can gradually speed it up all the way, let's say, to 200. Once you're
you're playing it that fast, you might as well kick it back to 100 and think of this now as the quarter note. One, two, one, two, one, two. go even faster than that. A good performance speed may be about 120. Now, what if your fingers are having trouble going that fast? There's a few secret expert tips for fast fingers. The secret, one secret of playing fast is to practice slow and very deliberate. Every great pianist I know uses slow practice to train their fingers to go fast. If you only practice fast, when I hear a pianist who only plays fast, it sounds so sloppy to me. When you only practice fast, your fingers get mushy and sound sloppy. I don't like listening to it. But if you'll practice slowly, get really comfortable with each note. Then gradually, your fingers will get more and more comfortable. Remember to stay relaxed. You can't play fast if you're tense and if you're moving too much. Remember, if you keep your fingers close to the keys and use small, efficient motions, they can move pretty fast. Keep your fingers close to the keys Start slow and gradually you'll be able to play it fast. Stay relaxed and use your best piano posture. Another really important thing as you're working on playing fast is to listen that your notes are really clean. What I mean by clean notes is a really crisp, clear sound where you can hear every note, even when you're playing them quickly. Listen. You can hear all five of those notes. One, two, three, four, five. Even though I'm playing them fast, it's clean and clear. Here's a bad example. Hear how the notes kind of all mush together? That doesn't sound clear or clean. Make sure, even when you're playing fast, that you can hear each note. Sometimes I hear students play like this. See, that's not even or clean. Even means the notes stay at one consistent speed. Ticky, ticky, tee, rest, ticky, ticky, tee. You don't want. So, as you practice, listen for clean, listen for even, and gradually as you practice slowly, soon you'll be playing it fast. My last tip to you as you're practicing arabesque is to use the dynamics to tell an interesting story. Remember that music is its own special language that doesn't use words to communicate. It uses sounds and dynamics to tell a story. So in your imagination, think of maybe a movie that this is the music for, or maybe a story that you've heard from a book. What does this sound like to you? Why does it crescendo there? Is something exciting happening? What's happening here? Are there any surprises? When there's a surprise, really make sure it's dramatic and exciting. When it's quiet, make sure that you get quiet. Your louds will be more exciting if your quiets are softer. Sometimes I hear a student play the whole piece loud, and then it's no fun. The louds aren't exciting if the whole thing is loud. But the best way to make an exciting forte is to have a really quiet piano. So use your imagination as you play. Have fun telling a musical story as you play this piece. Excellent work today learning the coda of arabesque. Now you know all the sections, and it's time to practice. Practice and more practice. 
Remember to find those sections you struggle with and focus on those sections. Repeat them many, many times until they're mastered. Once you can play arabesque start to finish with confidence, try performing it for a friend or family member. Or make a video of yourself playing and share it with me online. Thanks as always for watching and happy practicing! Excuse me, Mr. Hoffman? Yes, Scuba? Well, I was just noticing on Berg, uh, I mean, Berg Mueller's name that he has these two dots over one of the U's. Yeah, there it is. What are those two dots for? Ah, that U with the two dots. That's a special letter in the German alphabet called an umlaut. Umlaut? That's right. What kind of sound does an umlaut make? Well, it's a unique sound that we don't even make in English. To get the feel for it, try this. First say E. If you're watching this at home, try it too. Say E. 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 <laughs> now, keep saying E inside your mouth and don't change the shape or position of your tongue, but with your lips make an U shape. E. It's like your mouth and tongue are trying to say E, but your lips are trying to say U, and that makes E, E. Okay, E with my mouth and tongue and U with my lips. E, 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 I think I got it. Nice job, sounds great. So then put that sound back in the name and you get Bergmuller, Bergmuller. E, E, Bergmuller, Bergmuller. Hey, princess, guess what? I can speak German. Want to learn? Ee, ee.